Yesterday we talked about the theoretical probability, we went through uh, some of the ways to work with it. Um, today we're going to talk about the other type of probability, experimental probability. You already have this definition written down. I want you to highlight a couple things here. Um, first of all, experimental probability is how likely an event is to happen by repeating an experiment uh, many times and observing how many times that thing happens. So you highlight this, the number of times the event happens. So really, what are we basing this on? We're basing this on, based on past results. So if I watch an event 10 times, and it happens 7, then my experimental probability is 7 out of 10. You can also think of this as, uh, like we said yesterday, this is the ratio. It is a ratio of how many times something happened in the past out of how many times this were attempted. Um, so the... Uh, the formula is here. Notice the difference in notation. Uh, you have the EXP out front to show that it's experimental. Other than that, still the same. Um, write this down. It's the number of times the event occurs over the total number of trials. Notice that how this is similar to yesterday's. Yesterday's uh, ratio was the number of ways an event could happen to the total number of possibilities. Now we switch the language, so it's the number of times it did happen to the total number of times we try, okay? Um, so, here's how this looks. If you recall from, uh, from workshop, those of you who are in there, oftentimes when they give you experimental probability, they will give you a chart telling you how many times each thing happened. So if we look at this uh, circle right here, obviously, theoretical probability would just be one-third no matter what. So out of every three times, I would expect to roll a uh, spin of two once. Um, but we all know that doesn't necessarily happen. So one-third of my spins are not necessarily going to be ones, twos, or threes. And that's shown up here in the results of my experiment here. So again, take a look at the titles of the rows. We have outcomes and we have spins. So the outcomes was basically this is saying how many times were one spun, how many times were two, how many times were three. Um, and notice... Uh, the question is asking us uh, to estimate the probability of the spinner landing on two. It says estimate. I want you to box or, or highlight this. Estimate does not mean round when you're talking about probability. Let's write this down. Does not mean round. It means... Do experimental probability. It's called an estimate because it's not necessarily, the theoretical is thought of as like the exact. But we all know real life isn't always exact, so that's why we call experimental an estimate. So, experimental probability. We'll do our notation here. We're going to do EXP for experimental, capital P for probability, and in parentheses, I'll put the name of my event. Spinning a, a rolling, spinning a two here. All right. Let me just flip back. You can look back to the top of your page. My ratio is the number of times an event occurs. In this case, my event is a 2. Roll a spinning a 2. So I spun a 2 186 times. My denominator is the number of trials. Okay? So my number of trials here, if I add this up, I get 500. I can add those up, or I can just look in a paragraph and see that written right there. So 186 over 500 is the ratio. I can go about simplifying that, that, that ratio, or what we normally do for probability, since we're dealing with a lot larger number of trials, we just change it to a percent or a decimal. Because remember, percents and decimals are ratios as well, especially percents. Um, we can think of this as the percent of the time that a two was rolled. That's another way of thinking of experimental probability. Because if it was rolled a, a certain percentage in the past, we expect that percentage to sort of stay the same in the future. So 186 divided by 500 equals 0.372, which if I do times 100, that's 37.2%. You can either leave it at this step or this step. 37.2%. So 37.2% of my spins were twos. So I expect in the future, if, that, if my past results, remember we said these are observed on, uh, observations 
of all these trials. In the past, if it was 37.2%, we expect in the future that trend will continue. All right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and have you pause the video here and try this one. In this one, we're estimating the probability, there's that estimate meaning experimental, that a car will have Canadian license plates. Go ahead and pause the video, make sure you get the notation correct, and then uh, when you're ready, push play for the solution. All right, so first thing here, get our notation, experimental, probability of C for Canada. It tells me there are 60 cars, and looking at my table, 21 were Canadian. So my ratio is 21 to 60, which I'm then going to convert to a decimal. So 21 divided by 60 equals 0.35, or 35%. So again, 35% of the cars in the past were Canadian. I expect in the future that 35% will be Canadian uh, as well. Again. It's not necessarily always going to hold true, but for the data we observed, this is what we get. All right, two more questions. Let's we'll start with this one. So let's ignore this last question. We're going to compare the probability that the Huskies will win to the probability that the Knights will win. So in other words, uh, we're trying to figure out who's more likely to win the next game. And think about what we're basing this on. The table is giving us wins and total number of games. So we're basing this on who has the better win record. Who has won more games in the past? If a team has won more games in the past, uh, the data is telling us that that team is more likely to win in the future. So you're doing two different probability problems here. Okay? You're going to do uh, the, the Knights. And you're going to do the Huskies. So experimental probability of the Huskies versus experimental probability of the Knights. Go ahead and pause the video, work your way through this, and then hit play when you're ready for the solution. So my ratio here is going to be uh, the number of trials. In this case, a game is the trial to the total number of, I'm sorry, number of times the event occurred, the event being a win, to the number of trials. The game, each game is a trial, right? Either you win or you lose. Winning is what we want the, the uh, probability of, so that's going to be the outcome or the event we want. So, number of wins is my numerator, so for the Huskies that's 79. The number of trials they've had so far is 138. For the Knights, they played 90, so 90 trials. I'm sorry, 90, 90 of the times the event of winning has happened out of 146 trials. And then we'll do some division. 79 divided by 138. Again, just changing a fraction to a decimal here. 0.572 or 57.2%. So in the past, the Huskies have won 57.2% of the time. In the future, we expect that trend to continue. 90 divided by 146. Let's start over. Locked up. Great. There we go. There we go. 90 divided by 146. 0.616 times 100, which is 61.6%. So, based on this, who's more likely to win their next game? Well, if you're going just strictly off wins, which I realize there's more to it than that, but if you're going strictly off data from the past, the wins, you would say that the Knights are more likely to win, I should include this, uh, because they have a higher experimental probability of winning. One more follow-up question, though. If the Cougars play 20 more games, how many of them would they? Would you expect that they would win? I want you to work on this with your partner. You, you're going to use experimental probability. I want you to kind of think this through and see if you can come up with a solution. Let me pause the video for two or three minutes uh, and see if you can come up with a good, uh, good solution to this. When you're ready, come back and hit play. All right, so our experimental probability here is going to help us to determine 
the percentage of games that we would expect to win in the future, right? Probability is about how likely is something to occur. This time, we're just basing it on half. So for the Cougars, the experimental probability for the Cougars is 85 to 150. We had 150 trials. The event of winning occurred 85 times. If I divide that out, 85 divided by 150, I get 0.57. Let's just round that to 57%. 0.57. So they won 57% of their games in the past. Well, doesn't that mean that they'll win 57% of their game in the future? Most likely, again, probability is all about what's most likely to happen. So if they have 20 more games, you would expect them to win 57% of those games. That's the word of that I emphasize there. So all we have to do is take a percent of that number, so 0.57. Uh, it should be so easy. Times 20, okay? Which comes out to 11.4 games. So you can just chop that 4 off there. They will win. We would expect them, if they play 20 more, we would expect them to win 11 games. 11 out of those 20. Just a little uh, example to show you the application of experimental probability. Now you're going to do an activity where you're going to uh, actually take your own trials and results. So um, follow the directions on the worksheet that you will be provided. Again, for your homework tonight, make sure you follow along with the notes, and uh, good luck.